now it's time for my favorite part of this evening, which is hearing from two of our amazing current high school seniors and one of our awesome undergraduate advising fellows. I'm gonna go ahead and let them introduce themselves in just a moment. But after they introduce themselves, we're gonna be launching into the Q&A portion. And I would love if folks in this room would share their questions in the chat um, and we can elevate those as we go ahead and get started. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it on to you, Hosanna, to go ahead and introduce yourself to the group. Hi everyone, Hi. my name is Hosanna. Uh, I'm a senior from Northern Virginia and I was introduced to matriculate at the beginning of my senior year. That was definitely a time when I underestimated the intensity of the college application process, but a few weeks after I connected with my advising fellow, Sandy Gonzalez, I felt so much more at ease because I could rely on someone other than my college counselor or my school counselor um, throughout this application process. I'm also a first generation college student, so it was really nice to personally connect with my mentor um, on that base. And uh, this fall, I'll be studying at Dartmouth College, and I simply would not have done it without my advising fellow and the matriculate team. Awesome. Zainab, do you want to take it away? Yeah. So, hi, everyone. My name is Zainab. Um, I am from Arlington, Virginia, which is right outside of Washington, D.C., and I'm a rising freshman at Duke University. Um, so, I joined matriculate in September of 2020, so pretty late on. Um, and I really was feeling really alone as I kind of like realized like what the college application process would entail. And I knew I needed a support system. Um, so after being recommended um, by a friend, I decided to go into matriculate. And I ended up being connected with not only an advisor that guided me through the college process, but with also a friend that I know I will continue to reach out to um, as I go into my college journey. Um, and I really could not have done it without matriculate and the amazing resources they provided. Um, and yeah, I'm very, very grateful. Awesome. Inesh, take us home. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Inesh. I'm a rising senior at Emory University. I'm currently majoring in bio and chemistry, and I've been with matriculate from um, October of 2019. So it's been, it's been quite a while. Uh, it's been quite a journey, I think. Um, um, you know, when you do this, I think it's it's a lot of hard work, but I've created such lasting friendships with my high school uh, fellows. We've gone through so much and, you know, I'm so happy to see the outcomes, right? Because, you know, two of my high school fellows, one is going to uh, Harvard, the other one's going to Cornell. And um, to me, it's very meaningful because you see, um, I feel that they deserve to go there. That, that That's my, you know, and it's so nice to see that they, um, um, you know, at institutions like that. And, you know, um, it's, it's a very meaningful, but yeah. Awesome, thanks all. Again, would love for folks to share questions they have in the chat, but I'd love to just kick things off with all of us in the room, I think can relate to that. It's been one of the hardest years in our collective memories. So I'd love for us to sort of ground ourselves in the challenges that y'all face this year. Can you speak to some of the difficulties that you experienced both in terms of just being a student this year but also in accessing uh, for Hosanna and Zainab college support. Um, I can speak to that. Um, my counselor represents around 200 students. So although I had her to speak about my like recommendation letters and my transcript, the more like humane personal side of what college would really look like, I was kind of left alone in that aspect. So it was really nice to, to tackle those more personal questions with someone who was in my position just a few years back. And I personally had more questions about the social experiences of college because um, a lot of us end up at great institutions and the academics are great, but it was more of a question of would I fit, would I find my people? And I think uh, because we had a shared connection um, and we both identified as students of color, as black students, it was just so nice to be able to connect um, on that basis. Yeah, adding on to that, um, just being in the virtual environment where you're spending hours and hours on your computer and then you end up having to open up a laptop again at the end of the day and start trying to write your supplements or your college app essays. Like for me, writer's block was a huge problem that I suffered with. Um, 
But I found that like through matriculate and through having an advising fellow there to kind of support me um, because my parents obviously could not. I mean, I'm a first generation student and they, they really had no idea how the college process even worked. So I was kind of left to navigate that on my own. And I found, found it very reassuring to have someone there to kind of support me as I went about that. Um, and just anyone, someone I can just talk to because I think being in the virtual environment is super draining. Um, so yeah, I think having a matriculate advisor made the biggest difference in my um, year overall. Awesome. Yeah, I love what you both shared about the intersections between it just being a hard year overall, but it also being special that you could relate to your advising fellows on matters like personal identity and navigating through those authentic conversations about writer's block and what you want to share with colleges as you apply. I'd love to hear from both uh, you, Hosanna and Zainab, but also Inesh, about what it took to build authentic virtual relationships this year, which I think a lot of us found really challenging. I guess, uh, yeah, I guess I can go. Um, well, I think one of the most important things is actually, you know, caring about the other person, to be honest with you. I think you had to really care and, you know, you know try and really understand the other, you know, the high school fellow, what they're going through. And I think, you know, you're only privy to that information when you build that level of trust. And um, I think when, when, the approach that I took to advising, at least when I started out was, you know, the basis of what we do is um, we have to be a reliable, first of all, we have to be a reliable source of information. And I think the first few months of advising is so important. It's so important to be kind of prepared and ready to kind of, um, you know, be a source of, be that source of information. Cause that's where that initial trust is uh, brought in. And I think that's what blossoms eventually into friendships and things like that. Cause I think after you build that trust, they feel like they can tell you more about it, you know? And it, I think it's the foundation of that relationship. And it's after that only you come into um, kind of the financial aid stuff and what is the family situation? Like what, like, um, you know, you see the pressures that some parents are putting on these children to kind of go to this institution as opposed to this one, then you know, um, you know, through your conversations, you kind of know that the HSF doesn't want to go there. So I think it's it's a very complex kind of thing. And um, authenticity, I think, once again, is just, you know, being there also for the student. And sometimes, you know, one, one, one quick example I'll give you and I'll, I'll wrap it up. But um, it's just sometimes, you know, some HSFs, they have so much to do. Sometimes they'll call you at, uh, you know, 9 p.m. on a Saturday or something like that. And, you know, when one of the applications is due, you know, and ask you to read it. And I think authenticity sounds like one version of it is actually reading that because you actually care where they end up going. And uh, yeah, that's that's what, what I would think about that. But yeah. I will definitely agree with Inesh because it's so difficult to build, you know, really deep connections um, in this virtual setting. But what I found really interesting and I've learned to appreciate is that uh, matriculate advisors get trained for hours and hours and they're able to kind of adapt the curriculum or the toolbox where there's like a lot of resources about, you know, finding your college fit and adapt it to you. And I think that's precisely what my advising fellow did. Um, and I loved her so much for that because we could be staring at something on a paper like your um, your student should be at this stage, but then she would ask me more personal questions and of course get to know me before moving on. So definitely just taking it a step further and applying the material to my situation. Yeah, I definitely agree. And adding on to that, I think one of the things that really stands out about matriculate is that like your advisor is really only about two or three or four years older than you. So the age gap is not really that big. So in a way, like you really do relate to the stories that your advisor tells you, to the tips that they're telling you. Um, and it's just so much easier to connect with someone that's closer to your age than if you have, for example, um, your college counselor who may be much older than you or just your counselor in general. So I found like it to be really, really easy to kind of like foster an authentic relationship with my advisor, Angelica, because at the end of the day, like we were very, very similar in the sense that we both had, you know, similar interests. We were able to have conversations outside of um, you know, the college process. And 
she was able to really give me advice. And at the same time, it just felt so much more authentic because it was coming from someone who was really close to me in age. So I would say that was something that I really appreciated about matriculate. Awesome. Thanks so much all for sharing. I want to open up the room now to see if there's any questions living out for folks in the other room. Feel free to put them in the chat or even better take yourself off mute. I have a question. Um, I'd love to know if um, whether the matriculate program is, is sort of what you expected it to be like, um, either as a high school fellow or an advising fellow. Um, and if it wasn't sort of what what was different or um, what was sort of the same? I think I can help onto this one. Um, I think going into the matriculate process, um, I expected just to get like a, a high school, I mean, a college like counselor in my head. I was like, okay, this person's just gonna like make sure that I'm being like uh, following my deadlines, check my essays. I really thought it would not be like, you know, like an authentic relationship. I really was not expecting to, as I said, make a friend. Um, but I think I was pleasantly surprised to, say, to find that like my advisor was really open to being my friend. Um, and I think the fact that we were able to kind of foster a friendship beyond just what I was expecting um, really helped me kind of prosper as I went on to, like, throughout my college application process because I was excited for our calls. I was excited to hear what she had to say about my essays. I was really willing to just text her whenever I had a question and she was willing to answer. And for me, that is something so special that I feel like you really can't get beyond just having like someone like beyond um, like matriculate. And I feel like the college um, advisor is super willing to like be your friend, which I think is super important. So that's what I would say I was really pleasantly surprised about. Well, if I can quickly add on to that, I, I just wanted to say that I think the support that you get as an advising fellow is so immense. And I, I was truly actually surprised, to be honest with you, how much support you get. I think, um, you know, the roadmap that you provided, um, the various milestones, the various documents on each important section of the college process, process is, it's just so extensive. And I, I really didn't really believe that that would be the case and um i was you know genuinely surprised and it helps so much to be honest with you but it's not only that i think matriculate really goes a step further because then they give monthly webinars where they kind of test and not not really test but like give you additional information give you additional resources and also then you have the community itself right so you have the structure you have you know your head advising fellows and um you know, the, the beauty of writing matriculate is that you're dealing with real people, real problems, and you don't have the, all the answers. And I think being able to call up my head advising fellow and be say, hey, I have an issue. Can you help me with this? Is, um, you know, something that I really appreciated. And it's just such a, a human touch to it, I feel. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's something that I really, um, was honestly blown away to be honest with you because I don't think any other organization that I've at least been I've been a part of has this kind of feedback model that really listens to what we had to say and kind of assists us that way but yeah awesome I want to elevate a great question we got from Tom in the chat Tom thanks for joining for the high school students how did you find matriculate or how did matriculate find you that's a really good question. Um, I take AP courses with College Board, so they've had like my information for a while. And um, I also qualify for pre and reduced lunch. So based on that aspect, they were able to pair me with matriculate. And when I got like the first email, I was actually very surprised. Um, I thought it was way too good to be true, may have been a scam, but I'm very happy that I did not put it in my trash bin. Um, and I definitely um, checked in with it. So it was definitely my curiosity that led me to the program, but what made me stay was the fact that it was a very human connection and I could be speaking with, you know, someone in my position um, that is equipped with really relevant and really trusted information. So it was just a combination of many factors, but ultimately I decided to stay for those. Um, yeah, my story is a little bit different. I actually um, 
I'm part of this uh, group in my school called United Minority Girls. And essentially they help support like first generation low income girls um, to kind of navigate the college process. Um, but after kind of COVID hit and everything and my school kind of shut down, uh, I, there was really not that much support to be honest, like uh, in the beginning of the fall. But um, I actually got, my friend actually recommended to me um, to join matriculate. She's also a matriculate um, a student. So I decided to just, I remember also similar to Jose and I saw the text and I was like, oh, this seems too good to be true, like free advising. Cause like when I think of advising or counseling for college apps and just college in general, everything just seemed like so expensive. Um, so I decided to just give it a shot. I was really, really eager to kind of see where it would take me. And I'm, I'm very happy that I um, kind of went through with it. Awesome. I want to kind of echo that question to Inesh too. How did you find about about a matriculate at Emory? Yeah, that's a very interesting story. I think uh, during during my time, um, I can remember that particular year, matriculate was really, really going hard on like the advertising. I can remember they were drawing it on the floor and like having like uh, wonderful Wednesday tables where they did all kinds of stuff. But um, you know, and I think this is a, something that's common that I've when I've talked to other advising fellows. The reason that I actually ended up applying and joining was actually one of my friends was in matriculate and he said, hey, you know, you should you should uh, kind of check this out. It's kind of cool. And I was like, you know, let me try. And then, uh, you know, here I am <laughs> uh, about a year later. So I think that's a very common story. Like a lot of people have got into matriculate through knowing a friend who was in matriculate, which is very interesting. But yeah. Um, I have a follow-up question for all three of you, which is again, this year has been incredibly challenging. And I know the high school or the college application process can really challenge you to think about your identity and who you see yourself being on campus in the fall. Hosanna and Zainab, could you give me an idea of what you two have learned about yourselves over this past year? Um, well, I do actually remember a conversation I had with my advisor. And she was explaining how you emerged from this college application process, just discovering new things about yourself. And I would definitely have to concur. Um, I learned that I do not do well in high stress environments, <laughs> um, but also that I really need people. Like I'm a person who loves to connect and find meaning through shared connections. So that is also something that I, I hope to be starting in my future college campus. So um, definitely starting like a matriculate program at Dartmouth and just finding new ways to produce meaning through shared identity, shared culture, and just shared interests. Yeah, for me, um, I think I've really come to learn um, how to, I apologize if you hear the, there's like a storm happening, but um, I've really come to learn like how to balance my academic with my mental health and my physical health and just everything in general, because I think going into like virtual learning where you're just sitting down pretty much all day. Um, and it was really, really hard for me to kind of adjust. And I think especially during college app season where I really didn't even have the time to go outside as much as I used to. Um, and I felt like just this wave of stress hitting at me. Um, I think I kind of learned some like stress, uh, like stress management um, mechanisms and I think I've learned a lot about how I function best, which is by taking a lot of breaks, um, by having a lot of conversations with family, by going on walks, um, and by you know accepting the fact that I need to give myself grace and be patient with myself. And I think that's really like this, this process is daunting, but I, I went I went into it at one point with the fact that I was like I want to be able to look back at this process and be like, whoa, that was like a really rigorous but really you know rewarding process. I don't want to look back on it and be like, that was like some of the worst months of my high school career. And I think that really made the biggest difference for me. So yeah, that's what I would say. Um, so I think what I would say is mostly, <laughs> it's I, I think that the, the main thing that I really realize is just how much we need other people, to be honest with you, just how much um, how meaningful it is and how de-stressing it is to you know just have a conversation with your friends you know something like that and just about nothing really you know and how 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 important that really is to just just being able to live happily because I think when you're in college you're, you're hit with all these stuff right you're hit with these deadlines you're hit with these assignments and sometimes it feels 
uh, really isolating, I feel, especially during this time when, you know, when you, you know, you can't really meet anyone. And I think that's, it's kind of ironic because I think that's kind of what, um, you know, I came to really cherish the meetings that I had with my high school fellows as well. Because that was another time I got, I got to talk to someone else, right? And I think it was so amazing because I think that's, what he made me realize is that's also one of the hidden things I feel about advising. It's not really just about, oh, I come and I tell you a lot of information and stuff like that. It's more also just being there and like being human and, you know, actually having that conversation, that human connection. And I think um, that's just what I really, really realized is how de-stressing it is and how important it is to really sit down and have a conversation with your friends. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's what I really took away from it at least. Absolutely. I love how all three of you are really speaking to that aspect of presence and just kind of leaning into one another, especially in a year like this one. Um, and I think those are all lessons that everyone on this call can kind of hang on to and cherish as we make it into what's hopefully a better summer. Um, but I want to pivot really quickly because I know that there are big transitions coming up this fall. So Hosanna, you're going your way to Dartmouth and Zainab, you're at Duke. And Inesh, you're going to be launching into a whole other year at Emory. And I'm curious what advice you three would give to students who are starting this college application process this summer. If you have like two or three words of wisdom to share, I think that would be great. Um, yeah, so I think my biggest advice that I would give to all the future juniors going into the process and also to my past self, if I could, is be patient with yourself. I think we go into this process expecting to just hit all the deadlines and be like, have our schedules perfected and just make sure like everything is perfect. But writer's block is a reality. Stress is a reality. Um, just feeling exhausted is a reality. And like you're also managing college after school with family responsibilities and it's just a lot and you have to be really patient with yourself and, and give yourself time to kind of recover and give yourself time to do something fun. And, and it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay not to get that essay done today. There's always tomorrow. And I think also one big thing is like finding activities outside of school. And I think this is like probably super generic and you probably heard it multiple times. It's like, oh, find a hobby or something. We really do because for me specifically, I found myself at the beginning of senior year really without any like hobbies hobbies that I actually like enjoyed um because I was just like in this constant cycle of like stress and working and I found that once I was able to really like take it back and like find something to do or just like go out with my family more I was able to come back and my writer's block was like miraculously gone like I just had a, a, a fresher mind um to kind of work on things so just be patient with yourself and give yourself a lot of grace um and it's okay to not do everything perfectly because at the end of the day this is a journey it's not supposed to be like some like rigorous um step one step two like you're, you're supposed to make mistakes have ups and downs and you're supposed to look back on it and be like wow that was that was awesome so yeah yeah i love that um but i'd also add um as a student like from a student perspective it's really easy to consider these institutions as like very surface level or faceless and sometimes it's hard to picture yourself thriving in those spaces. So a piece of advice I'd give to not only myself, but other students in my position is that um, you are essentially unchanged from when you start the admissions process and when you end, um, especially as it comes to your worth, like your worth is unchanged. So whether you get a yes or a no from an institution, that does not change how valuable you are as a person because you are always um, enough. And that would be my best piece of advice. Yeah, I think I think you'll really touched on some really important stuff. But um, I think, to be honest with you, the best piece of advice is just to start the journey, to be honest with you, because I think for most people, you know, college is such a big kind of it's viewed almost as a hurdle. It's almost as something, it's so massive. You don't want to really think about it kind of. And I think, you know, like I, I really like the Nike logo cause it says, just do it. And it's like that, you just had to start it sometimes. And I think, you know, once you start it, you um, kind of uh, kind of figure out that it's not that bad. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work definitely but it's not as bad as you thought it was. And I think, 
um, you know, when you start it off, you and hopefully you'll find matriculate, you know, <laughs> that, <laughs> that'll definitely help. But um, what I'm saying is I think just starting that process really uh, coming to terms with it. And because uh, I think it gives you a much greater leeway uh, to make mistakes, right? Because you have more time. And it's, I think it's, um, you know, once you started, you'll, you'll be fine, basically. But yeah. Awesome. I want to be mindful of time, but also wanted to elevate this great question that we got from T Tom in the chat. So for all of our panelists, it's clearly benefited from the matriculate experience. That said, what is one thing matriculate should start doing, stop doing, or do more of? Um, I think for me, maybe like one thing that matriculate could do more of is like, like find ways for us to maybe connect with other matriculate students. Just because I feel like I was able to connect with a few matriculate students via social media, but there's really something so so reassuring about being able, and I think that's what we kind of lost in like this virtual environment is that like you weren't really able to turn to a friend and be like, hey, where are you in the process? So like it was much more difficult because there was like that virtual aspect. But if there was like a way for you know matriculate students to connect with each other and and I know now like we have like a Discord, which is awesome. So we're really able to kind of connect. But throughout the process, that would have been amazing. But I also think that there's so many ways for US students to kind of like get involved um, with other matriculate students just via social media in your in your own time, which is great. Yeah, I'd have to completely agree with Zainab. Um, I know we're still battling the pandemic, but I would love to see like more physical celebrations because I think it's incredibly important to maintain, you know, the network of students that have um, graduated uh, from the matriculate program or are just still in it. So physical celebrations, um, I'd love that or just like pop ups and just more ways to connect. But overall, I think matriculate is immensely doing this like great. So I would say keep doing what you guys are doing. Yeah, I think I think I have a few things that, you know, Matricula could start doing, but I think they're oddly specific and I don't think it's relevant for here. But what I would say is one thing that I think Matricula really, really, really gets right. And I think um, it's really the hallmark, to me at least, of a really great organization. It's It's that kind of feedback model, to be honest with you. Really hearing what we have to say, hearing what, you know, the high school fellows had to say and it, it really bridges the gap, I feel, between us and such like higher level people at matriculate. And I think it's it's so important because I, I feel as an organization grows, usually the distance between those increases. And I think sometimes there's no communication between that. But I really appreciate the fact that, um, you know, I uh, the, my feedback, I feel it really is heard by, you know, people. And I think it really um, informs how um, matriculate really um, tailors the whole um, curriculum and things like that. And I think that's something it should really um, keep doing. And I think that's what makes it, to be honest, very special as an organization, but yeah. Awesome. Thank you all so much for sharing your insights. I think I'm speaking for everyone in the room when I say that the three of you are just so incredibly impressive. And we're so grateful that you took the time to join. I think this past year has shown us all that it can be incredibly hard to build these meaningful virtual relationships just completely online. But the three of you have shown that it's way more than worth it. Um, and just grateful that you made the time to share your experiences. So sadly, we're approaching the end of our time together. I'm gonna go ahead and share my final thank you slide here. Uh, hope it works. <laughs> Awesome, but I just wanna take a moment and acknowledge that there are so many folks who joined us today. And for all of you in the room, I know you've heard about us or come to us through different outlets. I see some members of our board in here. I see some longtime friends of Matriculate and of course our team as well. And I just wanna say, regardless of your connection to our work, thank you so much, not only for making time to join today, but just the tremendous amounts of friendship and support you've shown us over the past year and in all years. Madeline, I'm going to kick it over to you to see if there's anything you want to share before we wrap up. Thanks all for being here and for everything that you've done to support students and to make sure that Matriculate can continue to do this work um, in the years to come. So thank you so much. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and pop my email in the chat in case anyone has any questions. 
or want to, wants to receive a copy of tonight's recording. But again, thank you all so much for joining and enjoy the rest of your week.